Hey, what's up, New Vintage family? Pastor David here once again with our midweek devotional. I hope that you're doing well, and and, and I hope that even in the midst of all the unknowns right now, uh, that you are staying faithful and seeking the Lord and allowing Him to move in your life. And I say that because according to recent statistics uh, in in COVID land, uh, 50% of the overall church, at least here in America, has has used this season as more of what you would call a spiritual vacation uh, than they have a time of spiritual growth. And as a spiritual leader, that's the last thing that I want to see our church doing. The last thing I want to see us doing is neglecting our spiritual lives. Like I've said from the very beginning of this, this church from home season, we need to use this time to grow and mature and nurture our faith and our knowledge of God. I want to see the future of New Vintage Church thriving in the power of the mighty God who lives within us. And I think you want that too. Because the truth is, the Bible tells us that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is alive within us. The same spirit that that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in you and is alive in me. We have resurrection power dwelling within us and it goes deep, deep into our bones. That kind of power, church, can change the world, right? It can change the world. The problem is most of us live our lives as if we have no idea that as men and women of God, we have the power to do miracles and display the greatness of our God. I would say most of us are walking around without even a second thought that God can use us in mighty ways. So my intention today is is to just remind you that when a man or woman of God lives their lives out of the power of the God who is within them, amazing things can happen. And I want to give you a biblical example of what I mean. So I want to share a passage with you today. And it's it's a very unique passage. Uh, It's a very short passage, but it's a very inspiring passage. So we're going to go to the book of 2 Kings chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. And, And this is basically the passage that informs us of the prophet Elisha's death. And if you don't know anything about the prophet Elisha, he was, he was a very powerful man of God who did many, many, many miracles. Uh, he spoke for the Lord on many occasions. And if you've never read through the life of Elisha or Elijah uh, at that point, uh, you need to read through the book of First and Second Kings, but both books, because it's, it's such an amazing story. And these men's lives were filled with the power of God. It's an amazing story. But anyway, Elisha was known as a mighty man of God, a man who lived out of the power of the God who dwelled within them. And and now he had died. And that's where our passage today is going to begin. And this is this is what it says. It says, so Elisha died and they buried him. Now, bands of Moabites used to invade the land in the spring of that year. And as a man was being buried, behold, a marauding band was seen, and the man was thrown into the grave of Elisha. And as soon as the man touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. That's crazy, right? I mean, someone was trying to bury their loved one or we, we, we suspect it was a loved one. And all of a the sudden, they see a band of raiders coming at them, right? Pirates, I don't know, grave robbers. So in a panic, they just, they throw the dead man in an old existing grave so that they can get the heck out of Dodge. Sorry, you know, you were important to us, but now our lives are on the line. But the grave that they decided to throw him in just so happened to be the grave of the prophet Elisha. And it says that as soon as the man touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. That gives me chills. That's crazy. The dude was resurrected. He came back to life. So what was intended to be a burial ended up becoming 
a miracle. And it's interesting because that's the end of the passage. Just two verses. The power of God that was inside Elisha was shown in two verses. God did in Elisha what he can do through all of us. See, Elisha didn't bring this man back to life. God did. Elisha's bones were were just the vehicle to show God's power. Just like when he was alive, it was his life that was the vehicle to show God's power. Elisha was an instrument for the power of the living God. He was an instrument in his life, and he was also an instrument even in his death. I wonder today, are you an instrument for God? Are, Are you allowing yourself to be used by God. Listen, when I read that passage, I ask myself, am I an effective instrument for for God to use in displaying his power to the world around me, to our church? And I encourage you to ask yourself the same thing. Are you an effective instrument for God to use in displaying his power? Because we have the power of the living God dwelling deep in our bones, church. And God can use us to display his power and bring dead men back to life. That's what Jesus does. He takes what's dead and he brings it to life. And I don't know about you, but there's nothing I want more than to live my life in such a way that everyone around me knows that I am a man of God who who doesn't live by my own power, by my own emotions, my own ideas, but by the power of the living God within me. I want to be an instrument that God can use, even when all that's left of me here on this earth is a pile of bones. So I ask you today, will you live out of the power of the God who lives within you? Are you living out of that power? Will you be an instrument of God? God uses his people, church. He uses his people to display his power and his glory. And we have to stop living our lives out of complacency. And we have to start living out of the power that we have been given through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's make a change in our lives today. We know it. It's here. We have the power of the living God with li- with living within us. It's in our bones. Why aren't we living as though we know that? Let's pray. God, I pray that you would remind us, that you would give us uh, an unshakable conviction that you are using us, that your power is within us, that we can go and change the world. Not for our glory, God. Not so that we can brag that we have the power of God within us, but so that we can have proof to the skeptics around us that you exist and that you are powerful and that you love them and that you want to change their life forever. Father, we pray for this world around us, Father. It's in chaos. But you're a God of order. You're a God of all that is perfect, and we trust that you have a plan. And I just pray that each and every person at New Vintage Church, including myself, the elders, that we would be willing instruments in your hands, that whether dead or alive, we can be a vehicle to show your power to the world around us. We love you, God. We just ask for your blessing and your favor on our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hey, thanks for watching, guys. I love you so much. Can't wait to see you. Uh, We're we're discussing things about how we can start to move forward. Um, So we will keep you posted the best that we can. Till then, just keep praying, keep seeking the Lord, and live out of the power of the God who lives within you. We'll see you next week.